Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be painting Hellenium flowers with their beautiful flared shape. Um, so I can't wait to get started with these. They're a beautiful loose floral. Um, so let's get painting. As usual, quick run through of supplies. So I'm using Winsor & Newton professional watercolour paints. Um, I buy them in tubes and put them in this plastic palette. If you want to know what colours I use, there is a supply list on my website. Um, it's linked in the video description. Then for paper, we're going to be using Legion Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press 100% Cotton. It's some of my favourite paper. Um, it's in a block, so it's glued on this edge here. Um, it just means I don't have to worry about taping it down. And then brushes. Um, Princeton Aqua Elite round. So I've got a size six and then I've got a size two, which I'm going to use for some of the dot detail. Um, but yeah, whatever size brushes, paper, you know, paint colors, whatever you've got at home, it's all, um, this is just what I use. So it's not a suggestion of what you need. Um, okay. So to paint a helenium, we're going to start with the center of the flower and then we're going to pull the petals down and then we're going to add the stem and leaves underneath. So we're aiming to have the top of the flower up here and then the leaves really down here. Um, so I'm going to use a bunch of different colors in this, um, but you can paint heleniums in any color that you like. Um, I just like red flowers with green leaves. They're a good classic contrasting combination. So I'm going to mix up quite a thick um, burnt umber mixture here and then put some water in it. So you want it to be watery enough that it creates a smooth mixture, but not so watery that it goes light in colour, light in value. We want it to be quite dark. So I'm using my size two and I'm just going to use a little dotting motion here with the brush angled upwards. So we're aiming to make a little dome shape. So I'm going to outline it first and then fill it in. In order to make this look dense, you need to use quite a lot of dots. So don't worry if they start to connect up. That's what makes it feel um, full. A bit too much paint there. As long as there's some white space and it doesn't turn into just a big brown blob, then we should be fine. Um, if you don't have any of these colors, whatever you've got as a brown is fine. You can also mix um, yellow and black together to make this deeper color. You can also use just a straight black if you want. I find that browns are quite, because they're more natural in nature to find browns rather than true blacks. It's often easier to use a, a brown in place of a black. But as I say, don't worry about it if you haven't got these exact supplies, just whatever you've got at home. It's not meant to be perfect. My style is very much a loose, expressive style. I've no patience for perfect. Um, okay, so we've got our initial stem. That looks great. Uh, our initial dome, sorry. Now we're going to add to it with a little cadmium yellow. So I only want a little bit of this, but it's just to create a lighter ring underneath. So same MO, just a few dots, and I'm going to let it touch into the brown a little bit as well. So one of my favorite ways to paint loose florals is to start with the center of the flower and then pull them out. It's my recipe for cone flowers um, and zinnias as well. There we go. So can you see how that's creating a blend in there? That's lovely. And then we're going to switch on to our medium sized brush. And for this, I'm going to be using um, a bit of cadmium red, a bit of cadmium red, sorry, mixed with Windsor red. So Windsor red is like a deep, raspberry color. Um, it's one of my favorite reds. Mix it all together and then we want quite a bit of water on the brush and we're going to start pulling down some petals. So we're going to connect to the center and then pull them down so like that and then pull them down. And then for the bottom, I want a jagged edge. So I'm just going to pull some flicks out like that. And then next to it, maybe a little thin one with a wider edge and then this one's going to have a big wide edge like that. So you can see I'm adding more water to make the strokes lighter. And 
I'm changing up the colours as well, so there's some dark ones and some much lighter ones there. One of the things I love about zinnias is that they're so um, changeable in terms of their petal shape. They give you loads of space to play around. And then when I've got to the edge here, what I'm going to do is just pull out a little side petal there. So it's not going to connect all the way to the top, but then it's just a little petal. And the idea is that it's peeking out from behind. Oh, that's a bit too light. And you can see that it has this kind of flare effect. Like a, a tutu or something flaring out. I really like how that looks. So I'm going to switch back now to my smaller brush and we're just going to add a little darker Windsor red detail. Um, one of the things that you really need to get right for loose florals is contrast. Um, so where this is, the yellow is blending out, I'm going to leave it, but then on other ones I'm going to add a bit of a shadow there and just let that blend out. If your petal like that started to dry, you can always come and just smudge it down a bit. That one's beautiful where that's bleeding out. That's what we're aiming for. And then we're going to do the same thing on the ends of the petals. So wiggle your brush about, get a nice jagged edge. and just let it bleed back up. Now, if you're finding that your petals are drying before you have a chance to, to come and do this, you can actually paint a couple of petals and then come back and add the wet and wet detail. It depends a lot on your paper. Um, cotton paper will stay wet for ages like this, and so I've got loads of time to come back to it, but uh, thinner paper doesn't always. There we go. I'm seeing a bit of a line in there, so I'm going to connect those up. Okay, and that's it for my flower. So the only thing left for us to do is the stem. Now for this, I'm going to use a um, sap green and a little cadmium yellow. So the reason I want to do that is that we've got some yellow at the top here, and I want to bring some yellow into the leaves as well. So you only need a little bit because the yellow is quite electric. There we go. Then we imagine that the stem comes out from the center like that. So we pull it down and then where we can see it here, it comes down. And then I'm going to use my framing technique for leaves. So this is about bringing leaves up that then curve up and kind of frame the flower and point the viewer's eye back towards the center. So I'm going to pull off a little stem there and then using a lot of water, I'm going to create a leaf that directs up and then on the other side, I'm going to use a darker mixture and just join that together. So I've got a little highlight in the center. And I've got my one leaf. And then for the other side, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to start from a different position on the stem, slightly lower down. There we go. And then on the other side, I'm going to use a bit more yellow. You can always turn your paper. I'm trying not to turn it so that you can still see on the camera. Um, but if you're struggling to do it kind of over your hand, you can turn the paper around so it's easier to get to. And then again, as we did with the flower, we're going to add some darker detail. So I'm going to add some darker sap green under there. I'm going to do the same with a little cadmium yellow here. There we go. In fact, I might even add just a touch up here. smudge that in. Okay, that's it. That is my Hellenium flower. All right, so there we have it. They're such easy flowers to paint and they just look so striking with their red flared shape. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please tell me in the comments what you want to see next time and I will see you in the next video.